Today we're going to talk about functions. A function is like a machine. There's an input, which is usually the x, and the input goes into the function or into the machine and out comes the output or the y value. This is called function notation. To read this, you say f of x. This is typically where we used to put y, but now we'll put f of x. So this function is read f of x equals x plus 3. If we were to use this function to build a table of values, we would pick out x values and plug them in for x. So let's start with 0. If 0 goes into this function as x, we write it like that. And then we still evaluate this part over here. 0 plus 3 is 3, so f of 0 is 3. In our table of values, we have a 0 and we have a 3. This is the output or the y, but now we'll call it f of x. We can keep building this table of values with this function by plugging in more x's. If we plug in 1 for x, we get 4. If we plug in 2, we get 5. And if we plug in 3, we get 6. The special thing that makes this a function is that every input or every x value only has one output. If I plug in a zero, there's only one possible outcome. Let's look at some examples and try to decide if they are functions or not a function. All right, remember, each function means that the input has one output. So let's look at this table of values. Each input needs one output. Uh-oh, this input of negative 1 has two different outputs. That means that's not a function. How about this one? The outputs are repeated, but that's okay because each input still only has one output. So, many students just say, well, I just need to make sure the x's don't repeat. That is mostly true. If your x's do repeat, then they need to have the same output. Let's look at some examples when we're just given a list of ordered pairs. All of these are functions. We can see that the x's are not repeating, so that's a function. Again here, the x's are not repeating, and the x's are not repeating. It doesn't matter if they're in order. It doesn't matter if you know what the function is. You don't have to figure out the equation. You just need to make sure that each input has one output. Look at this one. Here we have the input of one over and over, but we have four different outputs. That means that's not a function. Let's look at a mapping diagram. In this setup, the x's are on the left and the y's are on the right. We can follow each x to see which y corresponds with it. In this example, each input has one output, so that's a function. Take a look at this one. Here we see the input of 5 has two different outputs. That's not okay, that's not a function. Remember, it's okay if two different inputs have the same output. That's still a function. When we look at graphs, again we're trying to see if each x value or each input only has one output. You may have heard of the vertical line test. If you take a vertical line and move it across the graph, you can see if two points of the graph hit the vertical line at one time. If they do, then it's not a function. This one passes the vertical line test. Let's try the vertical line test on this parabola. We're trying to see if this pencil hits two points on this curvy line at one time. Nope, it passes the test, so that's a function. Let's try this one. As I move my pencil across, making a vertical line, can you see how it hits both here and here on that line? That means it doesn't pass the test and that's not a function. Let's try a circle. 
Oh, again, my pencil is hitting two points on that circle, so that's not a function. One of these is a function and one isn't. Let's try a vertical line test. Can you see up here how it's hitting lots of points at the same time? And down here, it only hits one point at a time as it moves across. That means that's a function and that's not a function. Let's also talk about some vocabulary. The domain of a function means all the possible x values. So the domain of this function here The range means all the possible y values or outputs. There's no need to list five again because it's already in the set. Let's write the domain and range for this parabola. The domain means all the possible inputs, all the x values. Because these arrows are gonna keep going in both directions, all x values are in this function. So we want to say all real numbers or you might see a fancy R. For the range we're looking for all the possible outputs or Y values. So they're going to keep increasing here but the lowest Y value will be negative 4. So we can say Y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Watch out when you're picking a domain and range for a word problem. Sometimes negatives or decimals may not be appropriate. If you are writing a function based on number of people or number of animals or something that you have to count whole items, then you probably don't want to allow decimals in your domain or range and you may not want negatives. Just think logically, could you have a decimal of whatever that function is about or would a negative number be appropriate? That will help you pick an appropriate domain and range.